Hey, good morning, everybody. Everybody is well. Happy Monday. Thanks so much for joining us on The Boost. Last week, we were talking about this concept of really understanding who we are, the power that we have. This is so important. I, I think this is so important. This is what I think. We, we don't really fully appreciate what we have, who we are. And when we do that, we sort of give up our power. You know, like, we don't really appreciate who we are. It's it's a it's a mechanism that we that we have inside us that relieves us from responsibility, right? Because if we knew who we were and we took it as seriously as as we need to, we would be much more careful. If we understood the impact of our actions, if we understood how important every little thing we do is, we would it would we would totally change how we act on a day-to-day basis. This happens sometimes when you see this sometimes with teachers. Now, most normal people won't go back to a teacher and say, you know, you messed me up, right? We hope. Like most people, teachers usually, I, I would I would bet, although who knows, I would bet that most teachers out there don't like, you know, get calls from students like, you know, from like, wherever they are in life, like at the bottom on the street, being like, thanks. Yeah, I'm living outside because of you. So usually they don't get it that way, but I am sure plenty of teachers get messages from students. I just heard of one the day. We had um, we were at a dinner, a school dinner, and the president of the school read an incredible letter from a student to... I think it was a fourth grade teacher that she enclosed with her own wedding invitation and said, I'm getting married. And I had a really hard time. I think it was fourth grade. And I was struggling and you believed in me and I'm here because of you. Like that's a credible letter. But if the teacher's thinking about it, the teacher's realizing, wait, 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 wait. I had an impact on a kid that lasted this long to the point when she invited me to a wedding how powerful are my words right we don't see it because people don't make those connections enough but if we fully understood how powerful our words are if we were able to really track it I believe that's what's going to happen when you get to heaven at the end of your life they'll, they'll show it to you and that's really you know a scary time because you see, you'll see how, how impactful you could have been. You'll see just what you did and what you could have done. And how a kind word here and a believing in someone here and a, a message here and a smile here and, and the ability to sort of see the world through someone else's eyes or the ability to just trust that someone else, even though they don't have your talents, is talented. We don't know this is happening, but it's happening. one of the companies I'm involved in, they had this thing called DEI training. DEI stands for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. So we did training on unconscious bias. I have to tell you, by the way, I was a little skeptical on the unconscious bias, even though I believe very strongly in unconscious bias. And we talk about it here on the show. You know, like, I am a Kahneman guy. I think that everything is biased. I believe that we are so biased that we have to work against the bias. But still, going into this training, I'm like, I don't know, there's no bias. I don't feel any bias. I believe every human being has the, is created in God's image. What bias? And we get to this training, this online training, and I was p- picked as, from a few group of people to do it. And the, the, the woman came on to lead it, and she said, okay, everybody has to go and split into breakout groups and discuss your unconscious bias. I'm like, no, I don't got any. <laughs> what am I going to do for the next 12 minutes? So I had to like search in my head for like, you know, forget. it's not like race or gender. It can be like if somebody appears lazy or if somebody speaks slowly or if somebody, you know, went to this school or that school. And like everyone's trying to find inside them what they're biased not against against the person, but maybe you think if somebody says, you know, no, I can't take something on, that must be that they're lazy. Maybe they're not. 
Maybe they're just being honest, right? Or if somebody, you know, speaks like a little bit like chiller, like what's up, bro? Like maybe they're not as 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 hard working, like that type of stuff. So we get in the room and or in, the, in the virtual rooms and we're all doing the thing. And then she comes back and everyone has to just to say what they have with their unconscious biases. And I was blown away. Everyone was sharing something, and it all came from how they experience life one person said that they were it was incredible one person said that they were biased against people of wealth they came from you know more humble beginnings this person was put into academic institutions against I guess other kids that had wealth and he's like I had to work this out because as soon as someone had money I just didn't like them I, I couldn't believe it he said it Front of, but like he was getting he was like figuring himself out a little bit that's why I'm, I'm like immediately allergic or think bad of people one person said that that she had this unconscious bias about people that you know sort of an academic background her, fa- her family valued education so much that as soon as she found out that you didn't have an academic background she like just bowled over you with you know fancy words and just to like make you feel like you weren't and she she was she was explaining it was unbelievable it was unbelievable one person said the wardrobe he grew up in a time where people of stature dressed properly so if you came in and you weren't dressed with a suit or a tie or a jacket right unconscious bias so so much of our bias really is how I see the world is how the world needs to be seen and when you look at other people even if you're not saying things that are terrible you're you're looking at them and you're 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 they're lower in your eyes because they don't look like you it's a tremendous thing by the way I think because they feel it but who says we're it who says my way is the way who says that you have to be like me who says who I am is any better than who you are why do I look down why does somebody look down at somebody else because they don't look like them they don't talk like them they don't have the same values if you've ever done a personality tests, you know that people are just built differently. They have different strengths and weaknesses and experiences and exposures. But it's it's our recognition of our power that creates responsibility. It's not a live and let live world. That's not that's not, we don't believe in that. We don't believe that you live and let live. That's not true. Right? We believe that you you respect, you you look to support. And if someone's doing the wrong thing, no, you have to you have to love them, right? You can't just go out and knock people, but you don't let them you don't let live, you try to correct. You're responsible for them. We're responsible for each other. Now, it doesn't make sense to be responsible for everybody, but the recognition that if 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 God put you in my life, I have to work out my own unconscious bias to make sure that because you don't look like me, I don't look down on you. Because you'll know. And you'll feel it. And I will have sucked out some of your spirituality. Not really, but you know what I mean. I will have I will have devalued you in your own eyes. And I'll never know. If they're 120, I'll know. But can you imagine? Can you imagine having people that wake up in the morning and can't be because of something that I said or did? Imagine people not having opportunities or not being able to become who they're supposed to be because they don't look like somebody else. Can you imagine kids, of which there are many that are, are, are achieving a fraction of their potential because they didn't look like their older sibling or their younger sibling who happened to be more, who was born more like one of the parents. That happens all the time. Some kids are born 
like one of the parents. They were they didn't do that. They were born that way. And because they happen to live in close proximity to another kid, and there are no parents that are like above this. Every one of us, every parent goes through this. One kid has to live life achieving a fraction of their potential because God didn't make them like you. So when the first kid is sharing what they did that day, you're 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 glowing, and the next kid you're like, really? Can you work harder? It's a responsibility. We gotta take it seriously. Because the world's our oyster and we can blow it up in such a positive way. But what it means to be responsible means you could also mess it up in a real way. Okay, we'll talk about this. Yeah, we'll talk about this. All right, everybody. Responsibility. With great ability comes great responsibility. And we have the ability to make a difference in people's lives in ways that we can't even dream. We got to take responsibility for that. All right, have a great day. And with God's help, I can't wait to see you again tomorrow. Have a great day. Living on a lifeline, the world doesn't ever seem to change. Looking for the sunshine, but you're caught up in the rain. It's like your eyes are wide open, but you cannot see. You're watching life pass you by like one, two, three. Walking in destruction, the winds of life blur your vision. All the devastation forever feels like you're on the run. It's time. No one else can set you free, you're locked inside, and only you have got